Hi everyone, welcome. So hiding behind my information board is today's feeding and hiding behind today's feeding is the worm bin that we're going to be checking in on today. It's the mixed red worms. It's a population of worms that includes European night crawlers, Indian blue worms, red wigglers, a pretty good effective combination of worms that coexist well with one another and the uh, the interesting thing about this system that sets it apart is the fact that I built it out of twine rope. And I guess it's not set so far apart because I do have one other system built out of the same stuff, but that's a set it and forget it system which just um, hasn't really been checked in on very much by its very nature of being forgotten about. But we're not forgetting about these little guys. We've gone 12 days since the last check and I believe it was a 12 day interval last time too between check-ins which seems to be working well because the feeding they got last time was comparable in size and I believe that they might be ready for more and this stuff is going to go pretty quick if you ask me it's all been frozen so by the time it melts it's going to go to mush but the the large majority of it is lettuce so there's um just this unusual breakdown of the 281 days that the system's been in service because during the first 186 days I treated it as everyday composting but the past 95 days yeah 95 days I've been treating it as foraging which just means no new bedding and that kind of I don't even know if that's so accurate because I always thought that in this system we were always wanting the worms to treat the twine which with the system was built as their bedding and we didn't want to add too much although I do remember in the beginning we definitely added a little bit not knowing if they can adopt the the twine right away so we wanted to make sure they had something to hang out in while we wait for them to move in and they moved in good and they've been utilizing this stuff nicely and a couple things have changed here over the past few check-ins one of them was just the swap out of the plastic covered cardboard top cover that had been um, deployed onto this system like most of my new systems deployed with a plastic cover to help the system hang on to its moisture content man what a worm party we've got going on here in the corner and a springtail party too <laughs> I don't know I can't resist because it does look like reaching into here is going to result in a huge pile of mixed red worms holy coal <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Look at that. That is a massive pile of worms. I couldn't even tell you how many worms we started this system with, but I mean, just based on what I'm seeing here, I got a feeling that when it comes time to move these little guys on, we'll probably be able to split the population and launch two new systems with these little guys. Man. Just wonder how much of what's in my hand is actually worms or is it just a combination of worms and other things but it certainly seemed to me like mainly worms wow not sure if it came through on the camera but i kept trying to spread my fingers wider and wider and wider to give them a greater area to spread out onto and i figured at some point all the worms would just gradually vanish out of view down into the castings that surrounds them but that sort of never really happened because there's just so few castings relative to the amount of worms here in my hand. So it's not too surprising that they were unable to shelter themselves from the bright lights because of the lack of material into which they would be able to climb. So that's pretty incredible for just the first handful of material, making me wonder what was it that we placed on that edge of the feeding last time because it certainly was a very popular item whatever it was but then again if you look through each well I've only had two handfuls now <laughs> so so far every handfuls yielded a huge number of worms huge I say wow I really don't even remember what the estimated worm count this system was but whatever it is I would say we've certainly got more than enough worms here to 
launch off two new bins when the day comes to bring this system to an end. Wow. So down here in the feeding zone I'm seeing other things besides some remnants of leftover foods. I believe stuff that I'm seeing here is like banana skins and this right here is a seed from a mango. Still holding up well enough that I'm unable to crack it open. And uh -huh, now I'm starting to also bump into other slow composting things. This is the stem of a pumpkin. So these slow composting items at this rate seem like they're probably going to end up accompanying the worms to their new home when the day comes to relocate them. And some of you might be wondering, with the feeding happening on the edge, am I in migration mode? Am I trying to get the worms to evacuate their castings so that we can facilitate a haul out? Well, it's not really on my radar yet because in a way, I've been wanting to treat the, the breakdown of whatever remains of the twine bedding in this system as the, as the trigger, if you will, to say yes, once the twine has all been consumed and is totally gone, that would be the time to treat this system as done, and then it would be time to maybe initiate the migration of the worms out of their castings, but with the feedings been set up this way on the edge of the bin for a while now, it almost does feel like we're in the process of migrating the worms. I believe that the last check-in also included me skipping an exploration of the material furthest away from the feeding zone, so I think today we will actually go exploring through that stuff furthest away from this edge where the feedings have been occurring just to give us a sense of how things over there are looking and you know in the past I had attempted to take any larger chunks of twine that I might encounter during our exploration and unravel them that usually meant that I had another glove to throw on my hand here and then I would just be able to dive in with both hands and unravel the twine but it did start to seem to me over the past few check-ins that there were just so few large chunks of twine remaining that would still need to be unraveled that um, today I didn't even bother with the second glove. I figured there would be no more unraveling needed here. But I think it's time to give them their lovely assortment of lettuce and tomato and onion that I showed you in the beginning. So I'll plop in these old food items that are kind of slow going, banana peel, pumpkin stems, even a seed out of an avocado here or a chunk of one, which must have already softened up enough to permit me to break the thing at some point because that's only a fragment of an avocado pit. And then in the past we would always try to collect up bits of twine and place them down in the feeding zone onto which the food went. This ain't twine though right here. This is that string that you get in the bakery when they tr try to close up a box that might hold some sort of pastries or other delicious item inside of a box or items. And that string just hasn't really shown any progress making me wonder if it's even a compostable fat. I thought it was cotton, but at this point I'm starting to question what kind of string that is because it seems like it's not going anywhere. If anybody out there knows, then please comment and clue me in. Because if it's a substance that's not going to be consumed and broken down by the worms, then it might as well get removed. But I keep giving it benefit of the doubt over and over again, every check-in, even though I keep questioning whether it's going to go anywhere. Um, and it keeps going back in, but I've already recognized for a few check-ins now that there is a likelihood that it'll just have to be removed because maybe it will never get broken down. Man, that was a fairly exciting handful of material.
to inspect there in the very beginning, <laughs> I must admit. So I'm glad to see that the worms are enjoying themselves, or at least it appeared that way to me. Now out here, if memory serves me correctly, the last check-in we did not till up this stuff, so this will be the first aeration in over three weeks. Assuming that the check-in that came prior to the last one did include a complete aeration of the material. And a lot of times we would also pluck out any fragments of twine rope that we would bump into over here and consolidate it. But for the most part I believe we've gone through this stuff numerous times, probably extracting the majority of it and anything that might have been left over the past 24 days could have already been broken down but as you see there's hardly anything if anything as far as twine fra fabric uh, twine fragments go I mean if you spotted one then I'd be surprised I didn't see one but then again I'm kind of moving quickly here I'm not really on the lookout for it I'm already kind of convinced that this edge of the bin is already for the most part free of any twine it's pretty much castings only but still the worms are quite content to be in it and that could be because of the moisture level but I think the aeration that we just did there and the submerging of the more dry stuff on the surface and the surfacing of the more damp stuff that's down low is going to aid in the drying of the system a little bit or at least I hope so because the moisture level is in here pretty high and at some point we will want to initiate the migration of the worms out of their finished castings but that's usually most effective when the worms are already kind of motivated to get out of the stuff because it is already in the process of drying and becoming a little bit less comfortable for the worms to want to remain in but at the present time the stuff still has a fairly high, fairly high degree of moisture leading me to think that a migration of the worms in here might be a um, a slow and tedious process if it doesn't start to dry out a little bit more before we try to initiate it. So that's it for the check-in. I got a couple things to take care of getting cleaned up and put away, but I'm not going to waste your time with that. Before I go really quick, let me just say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I know I did. <laughs> uh, if you did, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.